Hello everyone and welcome to another Genshin Impact lore video. Today, I'm going to go over the story of the Bloodstained Knight, a former knight of Favonius. His lore comes mostly from the Bloodstained Chivalry artifact set and the weapon, the Black Sword, as well as a few bits sprinkled in other artifacts and weapons as well. I also have a bit of theory tuck at the end for you all, so let's just get right into the video. Early in his life, the Bloodstained Knight was known instead as the White Knight, and was a member of the Knights Favonius. This was around 500 years ago, just before the Cataclysm struck. At this time, the Knights were led by Grandmaster Aaron Dolan, a wise and powerful knight. Aaron Dolan's fighting style was unique, wielding both a longsword and a greatsword. However, this style would later die out due to the immense strength needed for it. Working under Aaron Dolan was the knight known as the Wolf Pup, Rostam. He was the one who trained the White Knight. Rostam was quite an accomplished knight as well. He developed the Favonius Bladework fighting style, which is still used by the knights to this day. He was also the lover of a certain Rosalind Krushka Lohefalter, better known as La Senora. I'll get more into that in a video later this week, though. Anyways, as I said, Rostam trained the White Knight, and by his teachings, the White Knight became a powerful and accomplished knight in his own right. From Rostam's teachings, he also came to admire justice, and later in life as the Bloodstained Knight, would become rather obsessed with it. With his training, the White Knight would jump at any opportunity to correct injustice he saw. In one such case, he saved the Maiden from the Maiden Beloved Artifact series, and that Maiden eventually fell in love with him. While she insisted on giving him gifts and the like, he insisted that chivalry and justice were their own rewards. It would only go on to accept a single white flower from the Maiden. The White Knight also had a younger brother who was blind. We haven't gotten any bits about them interacting, we just know they are related. However, the White Knight's brother would die in the Cataclysm, going across to Vat trying to find him, which you can hear more about in the story of the Viridescent Venerer. Of course, the gentle and peaceful times of the White Knight's life would come to pass. 500 years ago, the Cataclysm began, and monsters rose all across to Vat. As a knight, he would fight back the monsters who came to invade Mondstadt. On one expedition, however, his teacher Rostam would be killed. Rostam's death would affect many people. His master, Aaron Dolan, would hang up his weapons and never fight again. His lover, Rosalind, would use her life's flame to fix the world's crookedness and become the Crimson Witch of Flame. And as for his student, the White Knight, he would focus solely on justice. Even before the Cataclysm, the White Knight focused on justice. He would even focus so much so that he would lose himself in the actions of cutting, slashing, and piercing his foes. While he was told by others that slaughter in the name of justice was still slaughter, he believed slaughter in the name of justice was still justice. With this philosophy in mind, he continued to cut, slash, and pierce his foes, those of course being the monsters who rose in the Cataclysm. In the process, he slowly became covered with black blood. This blood would also stain his weapons, armor, and the flower that the Maiden from Maiden Beloved had given him. Much like the Veridescent Venerer, even though he killed monsters and saved the people, he was seen as a monster himself, causing the people to flee in fear of him. Over time, his actions would take away his title of the White Knight, with him now becoming known as the Bloodstained Knight. Eventually, the Bloodstained Knight would discover the ultimate injustice. While journeying during the Cataclysm, he would come upon the ruined nation of Conria. He saw how the people had been turned into beasts, and vowed to exact justice for what happened to the people of this nation. Here, he also pledged his loyalty to the Abyss. Note, this is not necessarily loyalty to the Abyss Order, but the Abyss itself. Now, the Bloodstained Knight had originally journeyed down into the realm where Conria resided, 
in order to die in battle against the monsters. But instead, he would continue his journey of justice across Devad. Eventually, he would come across the viridescent Venerer in Sumeru, and taking her for a monster would kill her. I made a video on Viridescent's story last week, so check that out if you haven't as well. Anyways, after killing Viridescent, the Bloodstained Knight would continue his journey westward to settle the crime of twisting man into a beast's form. This is where the story of the Bloodstained Knight ends, at least for now. There are, however, still a lot of loose ends to tie up and questions to be answered. So, I think it's time we dive into a bit of speculating and theorizing and fill in a few of the missing pieces in the story of the Bloodstained Knight. First off, I'd like to talk about his real name. Throughout this video, I've referred to him as either the White Knight or the Bloodstained Knight. His real name, however, is possibly found in the bow Elegy for the End. In the lore of this weapon, we learn that while Rostam lay dying, he lamented, saying, at least Aaron Dolan and Roland are alright. Of course, we know Aaron Dolan as the Grand Master of the Knights of Avonius at the time. As for Roland, though, this is quite literally the only mention of this name in the game so far. Through the process of elimination, however, it can be reasonably assumed that Roland is the true name of the Bloodstained Knight. Now, of course, there is the theory about the Bloodstained Knight that I'm sure you've all heard of. I may make a separate video on this theory in the future, but for now I'll give a quick rundown and a few thoughts. This theory is of course the idea that the Bloodstained Knight and Il Capitano of the Fatui Harbingers are one and the same. To start off, Capitano's face is completely black, with no features being seen at all. However, in the wide shot of all the Harbingers in A Winter Night's Lazo, you can see what almost looks like his nose, as there is a little bump under his mask. While this could just be a visual error, it is still something to note. This would then suggest that Capitano's face was stained with black blood, similar of course to the Bloodstained Knight. Additionally, Capitano wears an iron mask, much like the Bloodstained Knight, and these masks even have some similarities. The four-pointed star and the Fatui insignia, the white wing-like shapes and the lines on Capitano's mask, how both come to a sharp point on the bottom and sides, and how the top stretches down about to the nose. Again, this theory will most likely become its own video where I go more in depth, but I just wanted to get a few ideas of my own out for now. I personally believe this theory could be true, and I'm really hoping we get some more lore bits about Capitano soon so that we can see if this theory is correct or not. The Bloodstained Knight story is super interesting, and Currently, it's left up to interpretation, which of course leaves plenty of room for theories. I personally believe he went on to become Capitano, but I would love to hear what thoughts and theories you all have down below in the comments. I hope you all have been enjoying this new style of lore video as well. I find it much more fun to make, and it's a better way of getting the information across, instead of just reading it straight from the game. I have another lore video on the Crimson Witch coming later this week, so look out for that too. I would love to get some recommendations on which bits of lore you would like me to cover as well, as sometimes it is hard for me to pick. But anyways, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching. Sources and further readings are also in the description if you want to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day, and I'll see you all in the next video.